Hey everyone, today I want to talk about AI image generation, which is a tool that I've been using in my videos so far. More specifically, I want to see how AI image generation as an architectural tool changes the design process. Because architects are always using different kinds of tools when they conceive of a building. So historically they would have used pen and paper for instance, or models, or watercolors, uh, or collage, which I'm particularly interested in, which we'll come back to. Uh, and today we use 3D modeling software. And from last year, we see architects starting slowly to start dabbling in using AI image generation programs. And the purpose of this video is to understand how we will design differently when using these tools. In order to do that, we will have to understand how this technology actually works, which I'll try to illustrate in this video. But before we get to all this, I want to just briefly take you through um, a very Western European um, lens of architectural history with a specific focus on the tool and how it has affected the design in the different periods. So let's start with vernacular architecture, which is essentially architecture without architects self-built architecture which has evolved in a kind of evolutionary process of a generation where uh, new generations are learning from the old so this is a kind of architecture which is highly specific to location with using local materials and building techniques optimized for local conditions and local climate vernacular architecture defined most of medieval architecture and at the heart of the medieval city, you'd find a Gothic cathedral. And even these enormous, spectacular buildings were not built by or not designed by an architect beforehand, but were built by master stonemasons. It wasn't until the Renaissance that the figure of the architect emerged. This was a time of great technological innovation and particularly different drawing techniques where you had map making perspectival drawings and the architects started making use of planometric and elevation drawings so that they can accurately describe scaled drawings that can then translate into buildings. As a result of this, we start seeing the architecture start taking on aspects from the drawing board, such as perfect circles forming the arch, which is due to the compass being used for the drawing, and an obsession with proportion, such as the golden ratio. Furthermore, the printing press was developed around this time, and you started seeing prints of standardized ornaments spread across Europe, creating a universal architecture, if you will, which embodies the universal values of the time. In the coming centuries, these trends would only grow stronger and new construction techniques were being developed of new materials such as wrought iron. You also had books collecting ornaments from around the world, creating styles that started blending ornaments from China and the Middle East into that of the Western tradition. And we see architectural styles such as Baroque, Rococo, but also Gothic Revival, as well as Art Nouveau and later Art Deco. At the start of the 20th century, we see a paradigmatic shift towards modernism. These architects drew inspiration from the blueprint drawings of the machines of the industrial age, completely stripped of ornaments. They saw the buildings as machines for living. The whiteness of the paper represented a tabula rasa, meaning a blank slate on which to draw their utopic designs. The buildings represented this by Le Corbusier's building being elevated on columns known as pilotis, or Mies van der Rohe's putting all his buildings on plinths, making the building separate from the historical urban fabric. Modernism remained the dominant architectural way of thinking until the 1970s, where we see the rise of postmodernism, The architectures of this era started using collage while they were conceiving of their ideas. This was a time where printed media was abundant and they took magazines and postcards and the likes and started cutting them up and combining elements together. The resulting architecture could, for instance, place the modernist window next to a 
broken pediment from the Baroque period, or famously a boxing ring next to a champagne bar. They argued for a collage city, where architectures from different periods and different ideologies sit next to each other, and the city becomes a kind of tapestry, where you're constantly being taken out of these different cosmoses, forcing the inhabitants to constantly challenge the assumptions that the architects have made. So obviously a lot has happened since the 70s, most remarkably the rise of 3D modeling softwares. But I want to pick up at this point of the collage because I think it directly relates to how AI works. Because the collage uses old precedents and recombines them, which is exactly how the AI also works. The crucial difference however is that the collage, or the traditional collage, celebrates the edges of the elements. While the smooth collage, which is what I choose to call this new AI paradigm, blends the edges together. So you might compare the difference between the collage and the smooth collage to that of a Wikipedia article and a text by ChatGPT, whereas the Wikipedia article is full of footnotes in order to clearly show where all the different parts of the text come from. The ChatGPT text has a sort of smoothness to it and you can never really unpick where it found the knowledge. So in order to understand why this happens, we need to go into a bit of technicalities, so bear with me. So a training of a neural network takes a huge dataset, in this case images, and compresses them into what is known as the AI model. It does so by finding similarities between all these images. Let's call these similarities parameters. What the neural network is then able to do is to represent any image not as pixels as they usually are, but instead as a certain score within each parameter. And so when the neural network categorizes pictures of architecture, it might do so by their color, it might do so by its shape, such as roundness or boxiness, or possibly by its smoothness or its level of intricacy. I like to kind of propose the idea that we flatten this latent space into a field which we might imagine as the future city. Existing buildings can then be placed according to their score in the various parameters. And all the AI does as it generates new design is simply to interpolate between these designs. And in this way it can fuse two seemingly completely different things into coherent new designs. And actually, what I find quite interesting about this is that this is quite similar to how a concept artist for a fantasy franchise works. For instance, I analyzed Blood Elf architecture from World of Warcraft, where I found that the architecture of ancient Babylon and Baghdad had been seamlessly fused with Belgian Art Nouveau. And as we analyze this drawing that I've made of how I imagine a AI generated city would be organized, we can see that it's structured along these axes where buildings are kind of morphing into one another. And if we isolate a particular building out and look at its neighbors, we can see that they form these kind of microcosms where neighboring buildings are matching each other. And I don't think I'm alone in liking when buildings and neighborhoods are fitting with one another. Uh, and in fact, I think we're seeing a big popular demand for just this. In Norway, we have something called the architectural uprising that demands classical architecture. But I find this approach to be somewhat lacking in, in imagination. Yet I completely agree with the sentiment behind the project and I actually wonder whether AI might be the tool suited to kind of heal the wounds that postmodernism left. What I worry about, however, is that the world will become like a ChatGPT output, where we never meet any of the sort of junctions, the texture that makes us stop and think. It's almost like my mind wants the 
70s collage while my heart yearns for the smooth collage. And I'm genuinely curious to hear your thoughts on this because this is obviously quite some experimental thinking on my part. Now, are you excited about this new smooth collage? Or are you scared? Please let me know in the comments below what you think. And as always, please like and subscribe as it really, really helps the channel. And I'll see you next time.